This deeper dive covers cross-site scripting. There are two types of cross-site scripting, stored cross-site scripting and reflected cross-site scripting. We'll be talking about both here today. Stored cross-site scripting is a little bit easier to understand and explain, so we'll start there. Cross-site scripting is a scenario where an attacker can send HTML or JavaScript code up to an application and then some way is found to get that same code down to our victim's computer. When that code is loaded into the browser, that's when the problems begin. Here's an example. This computer will represent our attacker. And this one over here will represent our victim. Frequently, cross-site scripting results in many victims being attacked. It could be hundreds, thousands, or even millions of potential victims. Stored cross-site scripting also requires a particular kind of vulnerable application, namely one where data is stored to a database somewhere, and then later pulled back from the database and sent down to the users. This could be something like an online web forum, maybe a blog, but it could be any application where data is sent to a database and then retrieved. Here's how it works. The attacker sends HTML or JavaScript up to the application instead of their normal input. This is then stored in the database and it waits there. Later, when our victim comes to the same website, they then download this HTML and JavaScript. So by using this vulnerable application as a starting point, we're able to attack every single person that comes to this website. The reason why this occurs is twofold. The first is that there are not proper input validation controls for input coming into the application. The second is that there are not good output sanitization controls for output going out of the application. Both of these issues combined are the reason why cross-site scripting works. Let's head over to our Hackers Bank application so we can see a demonstration of this. OK, here we are back at the Hackers Bank application. Let's start by logging in as user1. The post message functionality of the Hackers Bank application happens to have a stored cross-site scripting vulnerability. Let's click on the post message link. This functionality is intended to send a message to the administrator. So let's send a few messages. Let's start with something simple. Test, this is a test. We'll click Submit. This message has been successfully posted. Great. Let's try something more advanced. In this case, what we're going to do is simply send some HTML to the application. And it looks like that was successfully posted. Let's try another one. In this example, we're going to submit a little bit of JavaScript. So let's use the script tag. And this time, let's, let's pop up an alert that just says, hello world. OK, so that's been successfully posted. So we're starting to get the idea that there's no input validation on this application. Let's try one last one. OK, this one, we're going to pop up a dialog box that has our cookie variable in it. Now we're starting to get into where this becomes a malicious activity. Once again, it was submitted without any trouble. OK, so now let's log out of the user1 account. And we're going to log back in as the admin user. OK, so the admin user has the ability to view the messages. So let's click on the link. And we see that we've received a message from user1. 
And it looks like there's a number of messages here. The first one comes right up and just says, this is a test. That was the first one we did. If we click on the first cross-site scripting test, it comes back with the bold text just like we expected because we sent in header tags. If we click on the next one, this one pops up the Hello World dialog box that we submitted. That's interesting. Now, of course, this is only interesting as a proof of concept. Let's try one that's more interesting. Ah, here we go. This one printed out the contents of our document.cookie variable, which in this case contained login attempts equals one, role equals admin. Many applications also contain session identifier information in the cookie. If that were the case, the JavaScript could programmatically access it and send it off to an attacker somewhere else on the internet. What you've just seen here is a common scenario for cross-site scripting. It's not at all uncommon for a user to post a message knowing that an admin will look at it and submit JavaScript knowing that they will somehow be able to attack the admin account. Again, this is an example of stored cross-site scripting. In the next deeper dive, you'll learn about reflected cross-site scripting.